It was this time last year that the first essential components for Southern Company's new AP-1000 nuclear energy facility arrived from Japan at the port of Savannah. That shipment brought the massive plates for the bottom head of the Unit 3 containment vessel. Now, the second shipment is making port, carrying the bottom head plates for Unit 4's containment vessel. And on site here at Plant Vogel near Waynesboro, Georgia, progress continues. This is Vogel Timeline with your host, Joe Washington. The containment vessels are where the nuclear reactors will be housed. Looking at the existing containment vessels for Units 1 and 2, it's hard to really grasp the enormity of their structure and strength. Each of the containment vessels for the new facility, Units 3 and 4, will be 131 feet in diameter, rise about 213 feet tall, and will weigh an incredible 4,000 tons. Now, imagine what it takes to assemble these structures. Here's Matt Edmondson to tell us how it's done. The containment vessel is a cylindrical pressure vessel that will be assembled in five sections. You have a bottom head and a mirrored top head at the top, and then in between you have three rings, an upper, lower, and a middle. There will be approximately 248 plates assembled to construct the containment vessel when it's all said and done. Chicago Bridge and Iron is the uh, vendor that has been contracted to assemble and fabricate the containment vessel for Vogel 3 and 4. They actually constructed 30 years ago Vogel 1 and 2's containment vessel. Currently CB&I is fitting the plates as you can see behind me on the support structure in preparation of seam welding which should start uh, in the next couple of days. On the bottom head alone there is uh, approximately uh, half a million weld inches that will be applied uh, and, and that roughly calculates out to about 123 football field lengths. CB&I is welding the Nelson studs on the exterior of the vessel, these Nelson studs allow for more structural integrity. They will pour concrete underneath the bottom head and as it rises up, it encompasses the Nelson studs. When each section is done, they will be 100% RT examined, radiography tested to ensure that all the wells have solid integrity. The plan for CB&I going forward in the next three to six months is to continue fabrication of the bottom head in which they'll be doing the vertical seam and the horizontal seam welding in preparation to set the bottom head first quarter of 2012. Thanks, Matt. With all the construction activities on site working to build this facility, it's a project in itself to have the electricity supply available to conduct these activities. In other words, how do we provide the energy to build the new nuclear energy facility? Georgia Power Company designed a system for providing a reliable source of construction electricity throughout the course of this project while making sure there are minimal interruptions. Electricity is being brought to the site of Units 3 and 4 from the nearby Plant Wilson substation through underground cabling and associated equipment. So far, well over a mile of cabling has been laid and tested, and two pad-mounted switching cubicles and a pad-mounted metering cubicle have been installed. Managing the scope of the additional energy needed for the construction site ensures that all of the ongoing activities have the electricity they need to keep the work flowing smoothly. With construction well underway in many different areas here, the Information Technology Department, or IT, is playing a vital role in setting up temporary construction data network and voice communication systems. Highly reliable voice and data systems are critical in today's business world, and perhaps even more so at a nuclear energy facility. IT recently completed communications wiring for the 20,000 square foot construction office complex. This complex will house approximately 200 employees when complete. To be ready, more than 200 PCs and phones for engineers and other construction personnel have been installed here to help manage daily business needs. To enhance productivity in the field, IT is currently working on upgrading wireless network coverage in the construction areas to allow engineers to digitally access drawings and other documents in real time. This will enable them to see progress and address issues faster. In anticipation of the additional voice and data needs for Units 3 and 4, more than 18,000 feet of fiber optic cable have been installed to upgrade the facility's permanent fiber infrastructure. The new training building alone has 1,400 network connections, 250 PCs, a distance learning center, and two computer labs. 
By the time Vogel Units 3 and 4 are complete, there will be 2,000 phones, 1,000 workstations, numerous wireless phones, network cameras, and network connectivity throughout the facility. As nuclear energy is re-emerging as a viable way to meet new demand for electricity with the added benefit of no greenhouse gas emissions, Southern Company is leading the nation's nuclear energy renaissance. We're on schedule to be the first U.S. utility in more than 30 years to build new nuclear power generation, which will be part of our diverse portfolio of smarter, cleaner energy sources. Southern Company is the premier energy provider to the entire southeastern United States. We're committed to keeping our customers satisfied, and the construction of Vogel Units 3 and 4 is answering the need for emission-free, affordable, reliable energy. Coming up, we'll take a look back over the past year at the major milestones and achievements for 2011. We hope you'll join us for the next Vogel Timeline.